Hey coffee community, uh, Ryan here with Origins Coffee Roastery and uh, I'm bringing you another coffee tutorial today. Um, if you have ever watched one of our stories on Instagram and you saw something mysterious happening uh, on the screen where there's this thick, chocolatey, um, beautiful, aesthetically pleasing substance just dripping from a filter, um, you have witnessed, um, you have witnessed me brewing coffee with the Flare Espresso Maker. Um, the Flare is a really handy uh, manual espresso maker and I'm going to demonstrate for you guys today um, how it works. Um, give you some, some tips. I've been using a Pro, or I've been using a, a Flare. I started with their Classic when they first came out with it um, a few years ago and uh, have been able to test out some of their newer products. Uh, this is the Signature. Um, and they came out with a pro model. You can upgrade the signature now um, to a pro, which is basically uh, just a larger, a larger batch size here. You can fit somewhere around. I've maxed this out at 25 grams of, of coffee, but um, that's probably a little bit too much. Uh, I think maybe 23 or 24 is max. And then you've got, this is um, the original size basket which um, you can fit anywhere from 15 to, I usually max it out at 17. You could probably get 18 in there if you've got a really light roasted coffee that uh, doesn't take up as much space, um, not as much volume. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna use one of these today. Um, this is the now standard, um, it didn't used to be the standard, but I'm pretty sure they discontinued the old model, which had just a spout. This has, um, two options here. Uh, there's the bottomless option, which is really great because you can uh, you can kind of watch your brew, um, you can analyze it. Um, as you as you you might know about water, water always takes the path of least resistance. And so as you're watching uh, your brew here, you can see um, if you've got a level tamp or not. You can see if your grind is consistent because um, you'll you'll maybe see um, that there are spots where liquid is not coming out. Um, that's because you have an uneven tamp. Maybe you've tamped down too hard on one side and not enough on the other. It's, it's kind of like a mountain, right? Like water always runs down the mountain and into the valley and a little bit of it gets absorbed into the ground along the way, but the majority of the water is just washing away on the slopes. And so uh, same idea with coffee. Um, if you're doing a pour over, if you're doing espresso, if you're doing um, a drip brew, you know, it's the same same exact idea. You wanna make sure that your grounds are leveled out. You wanna make sure that you don't have channeling because you want all of that coffee to get extracted, not some of it more than the rest. And, and that, that, that'll inevitably happen. You know, you'll always have a little bit of coffee at least that's gonna get um, extracted a little bit more than the rest of it. Um, but you wanna minimize that as much as possible. So that's the great thing about having this, um, this bottomless portafilter. And to my knowledge, I could be wrong. Uh, if I'm wrong and, and you've, you've discovered something else, make a comment below, let me know, and I will never make that claim again. But as far as I know, this is the only two-in-one uh, portafilter on the market. Uh, is, it, at least as far as manual espresso goes. I don't know, maybe there's something uh, on the market for, for other devices. But So if you don't want to use this bottomless, uh, primarily because you don't want to risk making a mess, because if you didn't do good preparation do, making your espresso, it will make a mess. Sometimes you get espresso dripping down the sides here and doesn't always get into your cup. Um, sometimes you'll get uh, espresso spraying off to the side, maybe hitting your wall or maybe hitting your favorite shirt, which is never a good thing. If you don't want to take the risk, and I get it, I get it, especially when you're first dialing in your coffee, because if you've got a new coffee and you haven't adjusted the grind yet, um, you probably definitely wanna use this spout. And so you can just stick it on there. Don't have to worry about the mess. Don't have to worry about if you got your grind perfect or not. Um, or, or your tamp for that matter. And, um, and you can just go from there. Uh, I'm gonna pull a shot with the bottomless today. Gonna show you um, all the steps, show you 
how I do it, um, and we'll go from there. So first thing you need to know about espresso is that you absolutely 100% have to have a capable grinder. And this is where espresso becomes just not really a viable option for home baristas uh, because uh, a good espresso grinder can be very expensive. You're, you're, you're probably not going to spend less than, you know, three, four hundred dollars on on a coffee grinder, an electric coffee grinder that is capable of making espresso. Unless there are some exceptions. If you are into manual grinding, there are some really good manual coffee grinders on the market that um, that give you great espresso um, ground coffee. And um, yeah, and, and they, they tend to be a little bit more affordable. This is a new one from uh, a company called Caflano. This is an Italian uh, coffee company. And uh, I actually got this off of Kickstarter for 50 bucks. I think they run a little bit more than that now that they're uh, out in the market. Um, but uh, this is a great grinder. I can, do, I can do everything from French press all the way to espresso uh, with, this, with this coffee grinder. And, and I really like it. It's, uh, and it, it stows away really nice. I can put the, put the handle here, right? And uh, throw it in my luggage if I'm traveling. So uh, there are manual options. You just want to make sure that it's really actually capable of brewing espresso. Flare also makes a manual grinder. I believe it's called the, the Flare Royal. And uh, it seems promising. It hasn't been on the market for very long, but um, if there's one thing I know about Flare is that they make a really good product and they are just continually getting better with what they do. They're constantly upgrading, constantly innovating, and uh, I've, I've been nothing but happy with this, um, with this company, with this espresso maker. Um, and like I said, I've been using uh, a flare for a few years now, and I'm still a very happy customer. So um, let's go ahead, let's do it. I'm gonna grind some espresso grind uh, with my uh, Nuova Seminelli MDX. It's, a, it's actually a commercial uh, espresso grinder, so we're going to be guaranteed a great cup. Well, at least a great grind. But you won't be able to see me because I can't move it. It's too big. So you probably heard me start the grind and then stop the grind. Um, what I was doing is purging my coffee grinder. One thing that you absolutely don't want is old coffee grounds uh, in, your, in your filter basket. And a lot of coffee grinders, uh, they, they hold the grounds in the, some of the little crevices. And uh, that, will, that will actually really mess up your your brew um, because stale grounds grind uh, significantly differently than than fresh grounds so you want to be absolutely sure that you've got a fresh grind purge that grinder if it if it holds a lot of grounds um, mine I think I've measured it it's not very efficient uh, I think it holds about uh, three to four, maybe maybe five grams of stale coffee. So I have a little brush, I get in there and I brush it out and make sure that that's all out of there. But uh, we're gonna fill this up with about 16 grams of coffee. And with, um, with this, this is a, a, it's our Black Lab Espresso. It's a, kind of the first espresso blend that we developed at Origins. Um, it is a, a medium roast. It's one of our darker roasted coffees. We take it to a full city. Um, it's not, you know, it's definitely not French roast or anything like that, 
Um, but with a, with a darker roasted coffee, you'll find that you can't fit quite as much into the filter basket. If you have a light roasted coffee that you're doing, um, you'll definitely be able to fit more grounds in there. This is a nice medium roast. So I only put about 16, about 16 grams of coffee in there. And I do the fingertip tamp, which is I hold it up at eye level and just kind of gently press down. I don't do a hard, firm tamp. Um, I like to let my grinder do most of the work. Um, so the, the finer grind will create more resistance. I don't need to um, put too much tamping on there because the more you tamp down, actually, uh, probably the less even uh, your, your bed's gonna be. At least that's been my experience with the flare. So we put this on here um, and I've got a little shower screen right here that I'm gonna set just right on top of those, uh, those grounds in that basket. Now, um, retaining heat is really incredibly important for brewing manual espresso. Um, especially when you're talking about these, these solid steel parts, um, with the pro, it's even more, um, it's even more important, but with this, uh, signature setup, it's also important. So what I do is I set, uh, my water chamber inside my kettle while I'm doing my preparation and then I get it out pair of tongs. So we'll go ahead. I've got my water set at... 205 degrees. If you're doing a light roast, I recommend uh, taking it all the way to the boil um, because you, you lose a lot of heat whenever you're brewing. So I'm um, gonna go ahead, pour my water in. I've got a little plunger in there that I will attach my pressure gauge to. And actually filled it up probably a little bit too much. Here's the pressure gauge. It tells you if you're in that white area, you are brewing espresso. You don't want to put a lot more pressure on here than, um, than within that white because you don't want to break your machine. I'm going to actually pull this over here and I'm going to give you a visual on the brew. And you can see how I did in my preparation. So we're gonna go ahead, always time your brew. We're looking for a anywhere from a 30 to 45 second brew. Start with a pre-infusion. Just a light pre-infusion. And pre-infusion is more important with your, uh, with your light roasts. Oh yeah, that's some good looking coffee. It's probably gonna be a little bit of a longer extraction. I can feel a little bit more pressure than I normally get. Um, I had some dripping earlier today, and so I made the, the grind a little bit finer and might have been maybe a little bit too fine, but actually it's a really good looking brew. So like I said, this is our Black Lab. It is a Brazil base, uh, which is very nutty, very chocolatey, and then we have... Um, two other components in this blend. One is our dry process Ethiopia, which makes the cup a little bit fruity. Uh, not a lot, just a, just kind of that hint if you like a fruity coffee, there's a little bit of that in there. And then our Guatemalan component makes it uh, a little bit more of a, gives it more of a, a caramel sweetness to it. And so I'll give you a kind of a look here. That's some really good looking espresso. I should have done it in a glass mug so you could see the layers. But there it is. Manual espresso made with the Flare, the Flare manual espresso maker. And of course, as always, stir your espresso per the advice of James Hoffman because all that sweetness just sits at the bottom. You want to mix it up? So you can enjoy the entire cup. It's very nice. It's very nice, smooth, um, a little bit of bittersweet. Um, you get the that that nutty, chocolatey um, note in there, and then you get a little bit of that fruity. It's good stuff. Hey guys, have a great September day. Hope it's sunny where you are, 
and uh, always drink good coffee. Peace out.